Hey guys, I just wanted to go over basic setup of clean flight uh, for a fixed wing on a Naze 32 board. Uh, let's start with the basics here. Go ahead and uh, plug into your computer. It should make this little noise. You want to just to double check that it's connected. Go to system properties in your computer, device manager, and you'll go down to ports here and under ports you'll see that there's a couple different things going on here um, this is what we want in Silicon Labs that's the little chip on there it converts over so it can talk to the ST, STM32 chip device is working properly but the important thing that we want to know is that it's on COM4 so we're going to exit this out and we're going to open up clean flight and you should already have that downloaded on your computer here get clean flight open and show that it's seeing COM4 we could change this um, that's why you want to plug your NAS in first so that way clean flight the GUI sees the port the correct port um, we're gonna go ahead and put clean flight on here so by doing that we need to go to the firmware flasher and we need to select the correct board um, this will get you in trouble if you don't trust me uh, it's not cool it's not fun if you uh, flash CC3D firmware on your NAS um, I'm using the latest release of stable NAS I like stable versions um, and we're gonna go online and load firmware and make sure you're connected to the internet and at top here it's gonna show you that it loaded the firmware and then we're going to click on flash firmware and let it do its little happy job of flashing and watch the lights flash and go through their little process um, the first part of this little bar you see going across the screen is flashing it and the second part is verifying and it's double checking that everything's cool and happy and you know that it's reading the code properly back echoing it or whatever um, now once this completes, I like to disconnect the board and cycle the power on it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to leave firmware flasher. And we're going to reconnect. And it changed from 3 to 4 up there on the top automatically. And connect to our board. And uh, first thing you're going to want to do when it's mounted in solid is calibrate your accelerometer. Um, if you're using a full maze, um, calibrate your magnetometer. And you don't need a um, full maze or regular ACO board. It's just fine for an airplane. Um, it does everything you need to do. Um, just some basics. If you got this in a vehicle, it'll show your voltage here if that's hooked up correctly. Make sure you don't reverse the polarity on the... Uh, buzzer or the uh, voltage in uh, it'll instantly fry your board uh, the buzzer just won't work so good um, this tells you a lot of the other information current draw RSSI all fixed up GPS it'll tell you if your fix is true or false um, number of satellites uh, latitude longitude uh, all that good stuff uh, let's go through the tabs here ports this is what you use to configure your different ports if you're using the GPS or uh, how your telemetry is going and everything just leave this alone for the basics configuration now we're going to want to change this over to airplane so we'll go through here and there's Naze is wonderful and with uh, Dominique Clifton's edition of clean flight his fort is just awesome so between everything I like to save up here on the top it'll tell you okay it's rebooting that it's ready now I use a uh, PPM receiver so I'm gonna select that and I also like to use voltage monitoring all my throttle setups I leave alone um, for right now some people like the motor stop I do that on an airplane um, so that way the motors only when you arm it the motor doesn't spin up like on a quadcopter and then we're gonna go down and if you're using anything else down here um, in-flight accelerometer calibration I've never had any luck with 
Uh, we're not using the gimbal, uh, no serial right now, uh, no sonar on the airplane. Uh, telemetry is not related to this video. Uh, we're not playing 3D. You can fly your plane upside down, no problem, but we're not reversing the ESC and flying my plane backwards. Um, black box, that's something cool. I haven't yet to explore that. Um, GPS, return to home functions, all that. Um, doesn't work very good on a multi-rotor, so I'm not even attempting to play with it on an airplane at this time. Um, but clean flight is evolving constantly. So let's just go ahead and save this. Watch for it. Okay, it says that we're ready. Now that we got it all set up here, let's go over the controls on your board layout. Um, servos 1 and 2 out would be for your motor ESC connections. Um, 3 would be left aileron. 4 is right aileron. 5 is rudder. And 6 is elevator. Um, and the next thing you want to do is you want to go into your uh, setup tab here. And they don't, it still shows a quad, but everything's still the same so when I pick the front of the board up with the magic little arrow here that's showing up right up left up tail up it rotates to the left it rotates to the right so all our orientations are correct if we needed to change any of that say we wanted to make instead of this being the front this the front of the board we just rotate our yaw 180 degrees And save it after it's done rebooting we go to our setup and now everything's opposite this is the, the fronts up now or the backs up now this is the front up left up right up so it's all the same thing doesn't doesn't matter just make sure you get that correct and then go back and check it don't worry that it continues to show quad in the setup tab as long as in the configuration tab it's showing an airplane um, next thing we're going to do is PIDs. Take all your PIDs and cut them in half. So we're going to just take proportional two down, um, down to 15 here on the integral. And I don't know, I think I just went 12 here. And you want to do that through everything, uh, roll pitch and yaw. Um, you, don't, you don't need to touch none of this stuff. Um, doesn't really matter on an airplane. Um, all rates I've just left alone. Um, the nase doesn't control the throttle position at all um, unless it's doing uh, some sort of return to fun function is all that I know. So positions one and two are just passed through your throttle um, unless you start doing some mixing for like um, differential uh, yaw turning if you're running a twin motor. Receiver, um, if your receiver's kind of connected up this should show what your positions of all your sticks are. Uh, roll, pitch, yaw, throttle. Um, if anything is reversed on here, uh, it doesn't really show you like what's up and down, yaw, or uh, like which direction's going which. So it's just best to hook it up to your airplane and invert the directions in your controller. Um, that's the only thing you should do in your controller if you want to make any other rate adjustments. Um, you do it all here in the the GUI, you don't do it on your controller, it will make the clean flight upset. Now, uh, modes, let's go over that. I like an arming switch, it's nice and safe. So, the way my controller is set up on one, and we have that high. So, when my controller goes high, it arms on channel one. Now, if you want straight pass through, this is the next thing we're going to do. So, my channel two is what I control my modes with. So my first mode is pass through. This is just nothing. This is the control straight in, straight out. And this what originally started me with the nays in a plane is because I wanted uh, my receivers to do PPM. So I was just using the nays as a converter from the PPM of my receiver to convert it out to the separate servo channels that I needed. And then it evolved into playing with it and really loving it. Um, now, the, if you leave nothing checked, is uh, acro or whatever they want to call it, um, which is like in an airplane or in a multi, it's acro or whatever, it's um, self-stabilizing. So I leave my center stack unchecked. And then for uh, 
self-leveling and keeping on course, I use angle mode. So that's on channel 2 of my radio. So I move that up here. So the way this works is... And let's see, while we're at it, I also run a beeper. And that's on my third channel, and that's high. And that's just so I could find it. And the beeper's also real handy for um, the naze talks to you through the beeper. Um, besides, you could do a lot with the OLD lighting. But the naze does talk to you through the beeper, which I find funny handy enough for an airplane. Never tried auto-tune on an airplane. Uh, don't see any point to it. Um, never had much luck with it on a multi-rotor. Um, all this other stuff has to do with your OSD. Never played with heads adjust, um, magnetometer, any of that. I've only ran an acro naze. Um, I have played with a barometer and it does nothing. Um, don't see nothing in the code that does anything with the barometer besides the GPS functions. So the way this works is I have arm on channel one. One goes high and it arms the vehicle, but because I have the motor stop enabled, in my configuration tab it won't spin the propeller up um, it's a nice feature for an airplane so that way you can cut the throttle all the way back and you have full control of the throttle it's not like a multi-rotor where you're worried about going under the stall speed of the motor the uh, second thing my channel my second auxiliary channel uh, controls first low position my sticks are all passed through so whatever commands are coming out of my sticks um, come straight out and that's what you want to do all your pre-flight checks in and make sure that your pass-through works and all your control directions are proper. If anything needs to be reversed, you need to change it. You need to invert that channel setup on your radio. And, and again, that's the only thing you want to do on your radio. Um, the next position, the mid position, is nothing. So that gives me stability mode, which is acro mode on a quad, um, which is really awesome. And it's what I like the naze for on an airplane because it takes all those jumps and jitters and those sudden wind gusts out and it just really smooths the whole thing down. Um, you really notice a difference having the, the stability mode on. Uh, a lot of guys will say it's cheating, but I fly in heavily windy areas. I fly in the mountains a lot. I fly in sketchy situations, so to have my plane avoid doing you know 90 degree turn right now is really handy. Um, the next mode is angle mode, or not, excuse me, yeah, angle mode and that's my third position and that gives you self leveling um, which is really cool for if you got to take a scratch and adjust your goggles do whatever else FPV uh, if you want to hand it to somebody to just kind of feel what an airplane feels like in the air you can just whack the sticks all the way around in self in angle mode self level mode and it just writes itself back up uh, again this is all with the uh, PIDs cut in half and don't forget to save it after you do that and the other thing you want to do is once you have the um, your board mounted in, I had my board, my nays in a case and then glued in. And as soon as I'd, I'd had no ill effects in um, acro mode, in stability mode, the thing flew great, upside down, inverted, uh, flaps on, stole landings, all that cool stuff. It's it's awesome, but uh. When I first started messing with it, and I'd flip over to angle mode where it was wanting to self level, um, it would self level great, but it would drift to the right. And um, I don't, or let me, excuse me, let me stop there. The, you want to set when you go to your accelerometer and you calibrate your accelerometer, you want to, once you have your nays in, glued solid, you want to get your plane at its. Um, flying attitude um, where it's going to be at cruising along at the throttle position that you normally cruise at and uh, depending on like high wing low wing types of planes all the different things different throttle positions changes the attitude of the plane so you want to kind of roughly eyeball where that is out um, I got pretty close on it and then I would just calibrate my accelerometer just to get it to where it was dialed in and I was happy so I'd get the plane all blocked up on the bench where I felt attitude was right, then I'd calibrate the accelerometer, go out and fly it, and move on from there. But the one issue that I did have is every time I'd flip into self-level mode, is it would want to drift to the right. 
So what I did is I took and I moved my accelerometer trim or my board yaw and I just changed it by one degree. And it made a difference. And so I it turned it was a little bit less. So then I went two degrees and it was a little bit less and what it settled on was three degrees. So I had mounted my board in three degrees to the right so I needed to add three more degrees of or three less degrees excuse me of angle in my trims my board alignment so that way the board saw a true straight of what the airplane saw straight now again you want to take your plane and you want to fly it in pass through mode first and this is not naze is not for a beginning pilot to start out on um, but you want to be in pass through mode and pass through mode is awesome because it gives you the PPM output and it gives you the eventual chance to use all the other functions of the NAS, the OSD, um, hopefully clean flights, uh, return to home becomes evolved on the multi-rotors and eventually onto the airplanes. Uh, that'd be real cool. I have a lot of trust in the NAS, they fly great. Um, but again, I've heard a lot of people have issues with the NAS and I think it's because their PIDs are so high, it was so twitchy. So get your plane flying proper in pass-through mode um, get it trimmed out, get it leveled out, and get it happy before you even start trying to use any of the self-level modes or anything like that, because if you do, you're just going to end up in problems, you're going to end up chasing yourself. And, um, the second thing is, is when you're checking your controls from your pre-flights, do all your initial checks in pass-through mode. Make sure that you get the nice high five, that your flaps all moving, or your control surface is moving in the correct direction. There's no binding, no clicking, and your servos sound good. And then I like to flip over to a stability mode, acro mode, and give the plane a shake. And it should, all the control surfaces should react opposite of the direction that you move the plane. Um, it doesn't matter if you're inverted, sideways, whatever else, but they should move opposite. And just a little bit, and we're eighth of an inch. And that's, a, that's plenty enough to catch a wind gust. Uh, you'd be surprised. And then I flip over to angle mode and self-level mode and that then I hold the plane level and I try to see okay I nose down okay when I nose down the elevator should go up so because because it's trying to bring the plane back up and then when I have the plane at a level attitude it's trying to maintain that level attitude and when you're in angle mode it still gives you the stability but it's also trying to hold that angle which is a uh, really nice like I said, if you want to hand it off to somebody that's never flown before because then it's just the plane holds itself upright. Um, the other advantage is if you're trying to make some time or distance, it's a real good way to keep on a heading. Um, but besides that, I really don't use angle much. Uh, if you want to make a nice long glide, angle mode works good for that. But typically, I fly in stability mode if it's windy or gusty or I'm in a tight canyon narrow situation. Um, besides that, I really enjoy the nays i like to you guys to go out and see you put some on yours um i enjoy clean flight and dominic clifton and what he's doing with everything i see a lot of progress with it um especially like things like the adjustments here this is a whole can of worms i'm just beginning to explore to be able to do in-flight adjustments um the next step here is servos now you don't want to do any tuning besides inverting your channel direction in your controller. You want to do it all here and um, wing one is your left wing, wing two is your right ring, rudder elevator. Um, this sets your midpoint, this sets your minimum maximum travel um, and then you can change around what channels that it comes on uh, if you want any rate adjustments any of that. But this sets all your minimum maximums and this is really cool like for scale planes and stuff where the um, ailerons are acting in a different so you don't get any differential turn with your ailerons um, you can lift them at different rates and drop them at different rates uh, it's really handy um, GPS again it's not refined on multi rotors or even try it on an airplane um, but it if you want to add it for OSD information uh, they're real handy there if you're in GPS mode and you have a GPS mode selected here and you have a buzzer hooked up 
the nays will squawk that buzzer at you if it doesn't have less than five or six good satellites. Most of the little cheap satellite units you buy will flash that they have a full lock at about four satellites, but nays is not happy with four satellites. It wants five or six, and then that buzzer will go off. If you flip out of a GPS mode into pass-through or self-level, uh, or you're not using it at all, then the GPS will stop being mad at you. Um, motors here to tab, if you want to calibrate, I only have it set up to run one motor right now. Um, change it in the configuration to two motors, but if you want to program your ESC, you click on the little thing, make sure your prop's off, read the little warning that you don't get blood all over the computer, run your master up, and that gets full PWM signal out on your ESC, number one. And you go ahead and add power to your ESC. It'll do its little chime that it's in calibration mode. Lower the master. Let it go down to 1,000. Or it'll go to zero in a second. Sometimes it's not happy. And then your ESC is calibrated. It'll make its final series of beeps. Um, LED strip. This is really cool. Again, I'm just exploring all this. Um, Dominic's going real far with a lot of things. This is your sensor tab, so if you want to see instant accelerometer information, it all happens right here, X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, logging, this is more advanced features. And then command line. Um, you used to have to do a lot through the command line interface, and the only thing that I do now, and uh, the way to use the command line feet interface is pretty simple. The first thing to do is just type dump. And if you type dump down in the bottom here and hit enter, you get a list of all the master information. So we get everything from what features are enabled to the LED order and to what you're running. So the mixer type is plain, clean flight. This is the addition of the code that we're running. Um, RX PPM, um, all these are the features that we could have enabled. Right now we have PPM enabled, VBAT, motor stop. Um, there's all kinds of stuff here. Like I said, the only thing you really have to do anymore in the command line, um, besides some of the LED stuff, is for me, some people change their loop time. I don't. Um, the only thing that I change a command line anymore is the EMV, EMF avoidance. So I do set EMF underscore avoidance, and you got to do space equals one, and that changes the clock speed to a. Uh, it overclocks the unit because the STM32 chip resonates um, just about 433 megahertz and that really upsets UHF systems so by doing that it sets the EMF avoidance to one overclocks the processor and changes harmonic um, which is handy I don't know of any other ill effects doing it so I don't know why you just wouldn't do it in the first place to avoid pissing off your buddy's EM or UHF system now anything in the command line, if you don't type save, it's not going to save. So you're going to save, rebooting, and you're going to want to wait patiently for it to say rebooting. And if you wait a good 30 seconds like me and you're not a patient, you just click on some other tab. And when it's done doing what it's doing, it'll go to that other tab. But anyways, go get your nays out. Stick it in your airplane and have some fun with it. I really enjoy it. It's handy. It flies good. And uh, I think we're going to see a bunch of advancements and new cool things coming from Clean Flight and uh, the team of developers over there. Thanks for watching.